So in this video we're going to go over how to derive the product to sum and the sum to product identities. <clears throat> Here on the right there's a list of the product to sum identities and in each of these four identities you can see that we have a product either sine times cosine, cosine times sine, cosine times cosine, or sine times sine that is rewritten in terms of the sum or difference of cosine and sine functions since that's why these are called product changing a product into a sum slash difference identity to derive one of these identities the tools that we want to use are the sum and difference identities for cosine and sine and so the process is really straightforward let's say I wanted to derive the product identity for cosine. Cosine alpha times cosine beta equals one half cosine alpha plus beta plus cosine alpha minus beta. What I want to do is come up to my sum and difference identities for cosine and sine and find the ones that have the product of two cosines in them. So in this case you can see that you get a product of two cosines in the difference identity for cosine and I get a product of two cosines in the sum identity for the cosine function. So if I want to derive the product identity, so product to sum identity, I'm going to take and pick these two identities. And then what I want to do is either add these two identities together or subtract them in such a way where it keeps the thing that I want. In this case I want the product of two cosines, which is what I have here, and eliminates the part of the identity that I don't want, the product of two sines in this case. If I wanted to prove the product of two sines, right here, I would add or subtract this in a way that got rid of the cosines. But in this case, I want to find the product to some identity for the product of two cosines. So I'm gonna grab these two identities right here. I'm gonna grab the cosine of alpha minus beta, which I know equals cosine alpha cosine beta plus sine alpha sine beta and I'm going to grab the other cosine of the sum identity for cosine cosine alpha plus beta equals cosine alpha cosine beta and it's a plus so I get the minus and it's minus sine alpha sine beta. And what I want to notice is that if I add these two identities together, I'll get sine alpha sine beta plus minus sine alpha sine beta. Sine alpha sine beta minus sine alpha sine beta will give me a zero. And the product of two sines will have canceled. And I'll be just left with the product of two cosines. So I get cosine alpha minus beta plus cosine alpha plus beta equals, I get cosine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha cosine beta. I get two of those. I get two times cosine alpha cosine beta. And to get the product of the cosines by themselves, which is what I want right here, I just multiply both sides by a half. And that gives me my identity, one half the product of cosine of alpha minus beta plus the cosine of alpha plus beta is just going to equal the product cosine alpha times cosine beta, which is the identity I wanted to derive or verify. So the process would be the same if we were verifying these other ones. We just find the combination of sum and difference identities for cosine and sine that is co that will give us what we want, either the product of two sines, product of two cosines, a sine times a cosine, or a cosine times a sine, and you'll get the enjoyment of doing that in the homework, I'm sure. The sum to product identities, they go the other direction. So the sum to product says, hey, suppose I have this uh, sum of two sines a difference between two sines, a sum of two cosines, or a difference of two cosines, and I want to rewrite it as a product. I can see here I have some sine stuff being multiplied by some cosine stuff 
all the way down through. So the process for verifying or constructing these identities is the same. We're going to construct the identity that we want by using the product to sum identity. So this is sum to product. What we, what we want to use, our tool is going to be our product to sum. And the way that you decide it's really simple. You, you look at these identities, the sum of two sines, the difference of two sines, the sum of two cosines, the difference of two cosines. You go back to your product to sum identities that we had on the previous slide, and you'll notice that each of them either has the sum or difference of two sines or the sum or difference of two cosines and you pick the one that corresponds to the situation that you're in. So for example, let's say what I wanted to verify or what I wanted to derive from scratch is the sum identity for two sine functions. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this slide real fast. I'm going to duplicate this slide. Not like that, I'm not. I'm going to duplicate this slide Let's say that the identity that we wanted to come up with was the sum to product identity, where I have the sum of two sine functions. What I do is I go back and I look at my product to sum identities, and I say, is there a product to sum identity that has the sum of two sine functions in it? And there is. This first one has the sum of two sine functions. So you take that identity. That's the tool that you're going to use to construct this new sum to product identity. So we grab him and go back into full screen mode. So here's my tool. My tool is something that has a sum of two sine functions in it. And what I see here is that I have the sine of a single angle plus the sine of a single angle being rewritten as a product. So what we want to do is rewrite this so that we have the sine of a single angle plus the sine of a single angle. And we do this by just making a substitution. We recognize that when we add alpha plus beta together, we just get this single thing. So let's name it. Let's say, hey, u, let's do a substitution. Let's let u equal alpha plus beta. Then we could replace alpha plus beta with a u. And let's let v equal alpha minus beta. And then we could add, there's not a, that's not a beta, very good beta, is it? So replace alpha minus beta with a v. And now I have the sine of a single thing plus a sine of a single thing like I, like I want. And I could actually just multiply both sides by two. So a half of two is one. And I would get sine of u from right here plus the sine of v equaling 2 sine alpha cosine beta. 2 sine alpha cosine beta. The issue is, is we want to rewrite the entire thing in terms of u and v. We're substituting and getting rid of the alpha plus beta, the alpha minus beta. So we want to rewrite the alpha and beta in terms of u and v, the variable names we're using for our substitution. So what I can do is just take u equals alpha plus beta and recognize that u equals alpha plus beta combined with my poor betas, I can't do them. Combined with my v equals alpha minus beta, I can look at this as being a system of equations. So if I just add these two together, I get u plus v equals, and I get alpha plus alpha is two alpha, and beta plus the opposite of beta would be zero, so I wind up getting u plus v, v equals two alpha, and then if I divide both sides by two, these become a one, and I get u plus v over two equals alpha, and I can substitute that in for alpha right here, so I can get sine u plus sine v is going to be equal to two times the sine of alpha, but alpha is the same as u plus v all over 2. Cosine 
and now I want to rewrite the beta. We'll play the same game that we just did, but now we'll take u equals alpha plus beta, and we'll subtract the v equals alpha minus beta. So if we do that, we get u minus v equals alpha minus alpha is zero alphas. B minus the opposite of B is the same as B plus B, which is two Bs or betas. Divide both sides by two. Two divided by two is one. One B equals U minus V all over two, which gives us the identity that we have here. And then I just need to recognize that if I want to match the lettering that U and V are just representing arbitrary inputs. I can replace U with a theta and V with a phi. I could replace U with alpha and V with beta and then make those substitutions everywhere to switch the names over into a different format. So that's how you find the sum to product identities. You just identify the correct product to some identity to use and you do a substitution and a little bit of algebra.